Hi there, my name is Brian Warwick and I'm here at Northern Vermont University Linden and I'm going to talk a little bit about my job. Uh, let's see, uh, I'm a audio engineer. I'm also a music producer and I wanted to take you into my world a little bit and kind of show you how modern music is composed. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, I don't know, uh, like 20 years or something like that. And uh, before I was here uh, in Vermont, I lived in Los Angeles for a long period of time and I've, I've worked with all kinds of famous artists. And uh, so yeah, so I still do audio production to this day. And uh, I also teach here at the university. And we'll talk a little bit about how you too could become a music producer or an audio engineer or maybe just a performing musician. But yeah, I wanted to take you uh, on a little adventure here. And uh, if you notice, here we go, we got my software that I'm gonna use. So this is actually a digital audio workstation. And this specific audio software or application is called Logic Pro X. If anyone at home has uh, an Apple computer, Mac computer, this is a, a fancier version of GarageBand. Um, but basically what this lets me do is take a collection of sounds and mix them together to create something brand new. And a lot of popular music is loop based. So what I'm going to try to do, and this is going to be tough, I have not practiced this at all, so I hope this goes well. What I'm going to try to do is I am going to try to make a song, show you how we make a song, and we're going to do this really, really quickly. So in Logic Pro X, I actually have a collection of loops. You'll see on the right hand side of the screen that we have a collection of loops that we can use. And these are all different types of sounds. So we have different types of synthesizers. Let's just scroll down a little bit. We got some violins. We have some beats consisting of different percussion and drums, all kinds of sounds. And what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna to try to mix these sounds together. So we're gonna do this on a very, very simple level. Let's see, I'm gonna X out of here and I'm gonna to go to my descriptors. Actually, let's see, yeah, my uh, my descriptors here. And what I can do is I can actually kind of put in um, an emotion that I'm feeling right now. And right now, I don't know, I want to create something kind of electric for all of you and maybe cheerful. It's a cheerful kind of day here. So let's let's do let's do something cheerful. And I like to kind of build music from the bottom up. So I'm gonna start with some drums. I'm gonna to go to instruments and I'm gonna to go to beats. And drums play beats. And these are looped beats that we have here. So let's see what we have. Well, there's your kind of cool effect. I might use that later. Let's, let's mark that one, put a little heart on that one. And let's see, let's see what else we have here. So what I'm doing is I'm auditioning these beats. I'm, I'm tapping into uh, the emotions that I'm feeling right now, and I'm just trying to find something that, that fits with my vibe, fits with what I'm going for today. Let's pop go beat. I like that one. Let's go with that one. So I'm gonna click, and I'm actually gonna drag that file into my tracks area of Logic. And now if I hit spacebar, I have a beat to work with, right? So I got some drums in there to work with. 
Now, what I need to do is I need to make this beat play over and over and over again. In Logic, they call it a cycle. So if I hit the letter C in Logic, I actually get a cycle. You'll notice that I get this gold bar in my bars in Beats Ruler, and it's going to cycle this area. Oop, my cycle isn't quite long enough. If I do a Command U, shorten it up. Now it's just going to keep playing over and over and over, and that'll allow me to pick some other instruments to go with these drums. And you know what? This actually seems a little fast right now, right? I, I like the beat, but it's playing a little fast. Well, you'll notice here that I actually can adjust my tempo. It's currently at 128 beats per minute. And you can think like your heart beats probably at about 60 beats per minute. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit. So I'm going to click and drag and maybe just bring it down to 122 beats per minute. Now I can do some extreme stuff here too. I could go way down. Doesn't doesn't have quite the same feeling I was going for, or I could drag it way, way up. Now I do kind of like that, but it's not exactly what I'm going for with this beat. So let's double click on that and put it back to 122 BPM. All right, so I have this foundation. Now I'm going to try to find another intro. I still have my descriptors here. So I was doing something cheerful and electronic. Go to my instruments. And I'm going to try to find a synthetic bass to go with this. Let's see what we got here. And I think it's important when being creative, you can always, I can always remove something, right? Nothing I do here in Logic is going to be permanent. So, you know what? My first instinct is, you know what? That bass sound actually kind of goes well with these drums. If I don't like it later, I could always remove it. So let's just bring it on in. And now let's hear what we have. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, you'll notice that I have these little volume sliders here on each one of these tracks. That allows me to actually independently control each track. So I can hit my solo button here, and notice I'll only hear my beat if it's soloed. Can remove that solo, hit the solo here, and now I'll just hear that groovy electric bass. Now both. All right, so I have my beats and I have my bass. Let's see what else I can add here. Let's get rid of synthetic bass. What do you guys want? What do you want to hear? Let's see. See if I can vibe what's coming, coming from you watching this right now. Uh, maybe a synthesizer, right? Let's put a, th a synth that will go with these two elements. And a synthesizer is basically any any keyboard that's uh, synthesizing a sound, right? So these might not be natural instruments that you would hear in the real world. It's something that is being created by, uh, electronically. So let's see what we have. I'm going to press play here so I can choose the synthesizer. Ooh, let me do a little bit of a mix here. I might turn down my bass a little bit. Turn this down. A little too quiet. Bring it back in. There we 
go. Now let's check out some of these synths. that one let's throw it in it's a little loud right now turn it down yeah i'm starting to like this i'm starting to like this by the way notice that this loop that I just pulled in isn't as long as these other loops that I brought in. I can actually do a command R to repeat it on my QWERTY keyboard and now it would play the entire time. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like, I, it's okay if you do, but I don't like this right now. So I'm just gonna do a control M mute that region. I like what we had before. Let's see if I can find another synthesizer. There were a couple other cool ones in here. Ooh, this is cool. Drag that in. And maybe what I do is since I have this synthesizer already happening at the beginning part of my loop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click here. I'm gonna separate that region, control M. And now we have a synthesizer that plays during the first bar. And then we have a different synthesizer that plays during the second bar. See what that sounds like together. <laughs> Yeah, I'm liking this. So since we're uh, since I have to make this kind of quick, let's uh, let's start arranging this. So I only have four tracks here, and and a lot of times we'll have a lot a lot more instruments to work with in a song. But this is a good start for now. So we have these four tracks to play with. Let's turn off my cycle. I'm going to use that Command R command again, and I'm going to repeat it a bunch of times. So just hitting Command R, just repeating this loop that I've created. But now I'm going to do a little bit of arranging. And arranging in music is basically making decisions about where the music should play. And let me do one quick fix here just to make this a little bit faster. I'm going to remove that region. I'm going to click and remove that region. Now highlight all these and Command R. There we go. So now, if, if I didn't do any arranging, this song would just play the same thing in perpetuity, right? It would just keep going and going and going. Let's go. Whoop, here we go. Right from here. So it's fun. It's fun for a little while, but after a while, it, it just it just gets a little bit monotonous. It gets a little bit boring. So we have to go in and we have to arrange it. So I'm going to go in, just select and grab all these, and I'm going to mute all of these regions. So right now, this is what my song sounds like. I got nothing. I have to make a decision. I have to decide what is going to be the first thing that the listener hears on the radio. So, you know what? I I've, I've been kind of I've been kind of liking this beat. So, maybe I start by playing four bars of the beat. All right, so it needs to go somewhere, right? We've set it up, 
And we're like, okay, here's our introduction to the song. Let's keep that going. I think my beat is going to keep going. Control M there. And let's see, what's going to come in next? Maybe this little synth swirl. Maybe I bring that in next. Let's unmute those. Let's see. Let's bring it back here. Oops. And maybe this other synth has to come in. And now, my bass. And there, I sense another change. Maybe that this is going to be the next section of my song here. And then we can continue to build this song. And you know what? You know what I need? I need a beat drop here. I need something. I need something to happen right here. So people know we're transitioning into another part of the song. And you know what I'm going to do? We're going to add a fade. So people know that we're entering a different section of the song. Here we go. Just going to grab that, put some fades on there, and let's slow it down there. Check this out. See what you think. Oops, one more. Hold on. Got to do this here and this here. Here we go. So in a very, very brief video, this is audio production. Right, We're taking pre-existing recordings and we're putting them together to make a completely new piece of music. And a lot of the music that you're hearing on popular, uh, on popular radio stations, this is, they're doing something very, very similar. So you might be asking yourself, um, how do I become an audio engineer, a music producer, a musician, a professional musician? Well, uh, one of the first things that you need to do is you need to learn how to play a musical instrument, right? And that can be any musical instrument. I started with drums. Uh, I have uh, family members who play guitars. I have friends who play trumpet and flute and all, any musical instrument or piano. Piano is a great musical instrument. Start by learning a musical instrument. The next thing to continue your education is you got to go to college, right? So I was really fortunate. I, li I grew up in Massachusetts and 45 minutes from my house was a, a great college, Berkeley College of Music, where I studied music there. So I went to college and right after college, I, I went across the country, went to Los Angeles, and I started working in the music and entertainment industry. And I was really lucky, worked on some great television shows, worked on some great music projects as well. Um, now, I'm fortunate enough that I learned so much in Los Angeles. Now I'm here in Vermont at Northern Vermont University Linden. And if you want, I can show you in college how to do this stuff. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with me. Uh, always feel free to reach out I'm Brian Warwick at Northern Vermont University Linden. You can find me at their website at www.northernvermont.edu. And uh, I look forward to seeing you and uh, look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions. So take care. Thanks so much for watching.